Okay, so our icebreaker today is called My Family as Animals. <laughs> and I already know what some of you guys are thinking, like, this is right up your alley because your family acts just like animals. All the kids <laughs> eat all the food just like animals do, um, <laughs> run around just like animals. You know how parents say, look at you running around here like a wild animal. So mm -hmm. but, uh, this activity <laughs> is a pretty fun activity and you guys will get a chance to see what we did with this particular activity. So it requires <laughs> two things. It requires a sheet of paper and a pencil or a pen. You can use a pen as well. I prefer a pencil because you might have to erase, uh, but you need two supplies. So go ahead. If you have to pause the video, go ahead and pause the video, whatever you got to do. Um, and it doesn't say it on here, but it would be great if you had more than one person to participate with you in this particular activity. Um, so go ahead. If there's another family member around, um, as long as they are of age, they can do this activity. And of age means I say at least four or five. Mm -hmm. They can be as young as four they or five. They can draw a picture. They, they can, can draw, draw a picture. picture. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and get your blank sheets of paper or the back of an envelope or whatever you need. Um, that's <laughs> giving you some time. And then go ahead and get your, um, your pencils ready. And this is going to be exciting. And just so you know, too, so my family has animals. This is the activity. Uh, we didn't make this up. Um, this is a, actually a therapeutic activity. So this is something that I've used when I was working with children and families all the time. And it was number one, it was a good way for the family to engage and interact. But also number two, it was an opportunity um, for me to be able to see their dynamics, like their family dynamics. Mm -hmm. um, you learn a lot from this particular activity. Um, and so what the instructions are is, um, like I said earlier, you get you and at least one other person in the family. Now, even though they may not be present, think of at least four family members plus yourself and of course the other person um, that you have, if it's only you and one other person. If you can gather more than just you and one other person, great, pull everybody in that you can but it needs to be at least five people total and identify in your mind what animals they most represent based on their character. Mm -hmm. So for example, you might select a butterfly for a family member because that person is growing and flourishing, or you might select a pig because that person can be a little bit sloppy. <laughs> um, now of course we want to do our best not to really hurt another person's feeling so you don't want to pick animals that can be hurtful to another person's feelings but at the same time you want to be realistic as possible in your approach and what I mean by hurting a person's feeling you you don't want to be like oh yeah you know you a you a snake because you're always sneaking around and then it causes <laughs> a whole argument and things like that um so you want to still be respectful but also um make it fun keep the peace <laughs> keep the peace that's right on your sheet of paper what you're going to do is you're going to draw the animal um per each family member including yourself that you feel that that person most identifies with once completed you're going to share the drawing with your family members and share the reason for the animals that you selected it should be good <laughs> Yes, this is an interesting project here. <laughs> yes. So the purpose of it is, number one, it gives opportunity for shared communication. Um, you guys can talk about it. It offers better understanding of your family's perception of you. And then it's simply a fun activity for all to join in. And back to the perception, like, it's going to be fun. Like, if you have um you and two or three other family members that are all doing this activity and you know that there's going to be you and at least two other people drawing you it's their version of you versus your version of you you can see if there are similarities or differences in the animals that um that are chosen mm -hmm. okay. it's kind of interesting because that is uh the how others perceive you and, and do others perceive you how you perceive yourself Mm hmm. And then also it's like, OK, are you going to pick the best quality 
Or are you going to pick the one, the quality about me that get on your nerves? You know? <laughs> um, so in one instance, your family member might be like, um, you know, that butterfly, that's the best quality, but that same family member might also be like that pig that is like the worst uh-huh. like quality that get on your nerves. Um, uh-huh. This activity shouldn't take more than 20 minutes. As you're thinking about drawing, think outside the box. Maybe Google some animals if you need to. Also, you can Google your drawings too. So if you don't feel comfortable drawing or, you know, you're worried about being a fantastic drawer, just Google how to draw something um, and that might help. But don't focus too much on that part um, because you don't want to miss the purpose of the activity. And it's not for you to be a great artist more so than it is for you to draw the animal that your family member most represents. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, are there any animals that you would be offended by, Tiffany? Animals that I would be offended by? Mm-hmm. Probably a slug. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's not an animal. That's more like an insect, isn't it? Um, well, that's a good point. You can use insect. You can pretty much use any living creature. You did say butterfly, food. so that's an it. That's an it. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. um, I, yeah, I would say a slug. Um. What about if they said like a dinosaur? Mm, I said I'm a T-Rex in a song before, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I can't really argue with that. Um, what about the now What if they said or- something like an elephant? <laughs> elephants are wise. Now, yes, if, they if, are. If I'm if I'm like feeling a certain type of way about my weight and you said I'm an elephant, then I would be offended. Exactly. But what but if you, you have said, some some that type of weight as well as you're very smart and somebody really is thinking that the elephant represents your wisdom? Right. So to some, degree, by that? Depends. to some degree, I think it depends. I think other animals, not very many, but other animals might just be like all the way around. Like there's some things people, like going back to like the snake idea, like who mm-hmm. wants to see on a piece of paper that you think of another snake? But right. it might open up good discussion because what if that family member really does have those really, really bad, you know, I guess, I'm, I don't want to call them qualities, but things that contribute to the family in a bad way. I mean, if we got really, really deep with this activity, even though for us is, right now it's not that deep, you might have to address some things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so um, I would say, you know, for those of you who might be finding out that, you know, there's some things that you might need to have addressed and, you know, we're here for you guys, you know, just we're here in the chat. Don't forget that. And also um, you are able to contact us, you know, we'll share some more information about how to do that later on. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're getting ready to show you guys what we drew. <laughs> and we'll describe it. So who we chose was five family members, including ourselves. So we chose our mother, our father, our each other, and then mm-hmm. our younger sister, and then ourselves. Mm-hmm. So let's go to the first one. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is by me. <laughs> Did you Google those? <laughs> yeah. I Googled how to draw the basics. The only one I didn't Google was the um, the lion. That bunny and, looking real good. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so here we go. Um, I drew myself as a lion. Um, I look at a lion as being courageous. Um, I look at a lion as being bold. But I also think kind of like the Wizard of Oz where, you know, that lion kind of had a little bit of fear. Um they had a little bit of fear in in not the cowardly lion, but I'm not a coward at, by any means, but there's a little bit of fear behind that. Cor- That's not Curry. a real lion anyway, Tange. That was just it's an not. <laughs> but I know, I'm giving an example, but I'm just saying like, it's the idea of having a little bit of fear behind the boldness, behind the courage mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. that's there. Um and then I've always just kind of been attracted to the lion's mane, you know, mm-hmm. like oh, like the little idea of, you know, hair and things like that. Yeah, um, some pretty hair, didn't it? Yeah, it's a teeny um, tiny. <laughs> well, not 
I like them curls. You want to do spirals <laughs> on the Wizard of Oz? Feel the temple curls, but um, he was holding his tail. He was all. Yeah. <laughs> and the lion is a leader. You know, we look at the Bible, the Lion of Judah, and things like that. Like the lion has some really strong qualities about himself. But we do know that um, the lioness is actually the king of the jungle. But we'll talk about that. <laughs> What they she call it, the queen. queen, woman, queen, woman, woman, something like that. <laughs> okay. So then, yeah, Tiffany. So okay, so you are a bunny rabbit. Now you could have been a um, what's some little jack rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, okay. So bunny <laughs> rabbits are very. A lot of people like bunnies. They look, you know, cute and cuddly and things like that. That's not what was driving the but the rabbit for me, but um, I think it's the level of energy that you have about yourself. It's like a rabbit. Like it, rabbits don't walk. I mean, if That's they do, true. I've never seen a rabbit walk. <laughs> they hop everywhere they go. They'll take a step or two. They might take a step or two, but they pretty much hop. I mean, like, and now yeah. I think about like God made a whole animal that hops. <laughs> Well, at least you didn't say frog. <laughs> oh, okay, so there's a few animals that hop, like they don't walk for a living. But anyway. That, that turtle um, over there, the turtle yeah. over there calls me frog for a little nickname. <laughs> yeah, I guess you get to that when um, your, you, you pull yours up, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yours is a bunny, but there's a little part of bunnies. So the hopping part, the kind of getting getting up and go, always on the go, going around, you know, high energy, um, got a lot of energy, but also um, pleasant to be around. For the most part, mm -hmm. rabbits are pleasant to be around, but there's a little spice to a rabbit if you um, if you if you if it feels threatened, like rabbits yeah. can hiss. <laughs> Oh, there's it's it's even more interesting that you brought this up as a rabbit because I had um, a bad experience with a rabbit when I was a little girl. You, I don't know if you remember, we went to this daycare that had a petting zoo, and they would allow us to bring the rabbits home. And I think that's what you're talking about when that that rabbit uh, growled and hissed. But I'm talking about at school when they were allowing us to hold the rabbits and one of them decided he wanted to get out of my lap right away and right then. And he scratched my stomach and hopped down and away. And now when he hopped away, it was because I had threw him across the, the playground. The teacher said, don't do that. Don't throw the rabbit. And I was like, well, he scratched me. And I had, it was just like, cat scratches and that's something I don't think many people know about rabbits is that they scratch just as bad if not even and from my experience worse than a cat because it was like four scratches across my stomach so that's interesting you said that because now that doesn't um negate the fact that that situation I could see myself in as well I can see that as a part of me too when I'm ready to go <laughs> and I will, I will, I'm gonna get going, you know, hop mm -hmm. to it and don't let much hold me back, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I can see what you're saying as well as um my experience, my personal experience with a rabbit. Um, I guess you would say that that kind of speaks to who I am as well. Cool. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we have our uh, moving down where it says Tyra, that's our younger sister, our youngest sister. That is a puppy dog. Pup, pup. <laughs> Tyra <laughs> pup, pup. is going to be forever a child in my mind. So um, <laughs> that, you know, that doesn't mean that I, I just baby. Her that way, but you know, just all no, she's still the baby <laughs> and running around and doing different things. So um, yeah. this reminds me of a, of a puppy dog. Um, <laughs> always dancing uh -huh. and doing something huh mm -hmm. then we have dad uh we call him norman <laughs> <laughs> but he's a turtle um mm -hmm. turtles can go into their shell and just kind of be recluse a little bit um you're not gonna see them much they're gonna they're gonna 
they they have a presence, but they're not going to always um, um, be active and engaged and involved mm-hmm. and things like that. So um, that's why I chose a turtle. And then our mom is a bear um, and a bear in a good way, uh, mm-hmm. like a mama bear. So mm-hmm. you guys know the story of like Goldilocks and the three bears. Um, just like a mama bear who's going to protect her cubs. So even just like I said, with our younger sister, I still think of her as a child. Sometimes I think of, think our mom thinks of us as a child. Like we're well into our adulthood and she still tells stories of us like we were babies. Mm-hmm. Like she tell people. We were her live her. dolls for a little while. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she's like mama bear is protecting her cubs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, Tiffany. Ooh. What you got? Did you draw those for me? <laughs> oh. Okay. Those. Okay. So, um, mine is the first one is um, I would say that's a hawk. Um, that's myself, and I chose the hawk because it's, uh, it has a keen eye, pays a lot of attention, it can see very far. Um, it's looking when you think it's looking at one thing it's looking further than what you think and it's good at searching and seeking out um, the things that it needs um, to survive um, it's kind of a loner but at the same time of course you know we wouldn't have any if it didn't uh, work hawks getting together at some point but um and it, it was it's just um, I guess one of those, a majestic bird. Um, don't know why, but this, it's just a majestic bird. It's just kind of, I don't know. But anyway, um, that's me. My mom is a lioness. And I guess it's similar to what Tangie said. She's a mama bear. Um, I see mama bears as, you know, bear, they say bears are ferocious. Um, they say lions are ferocious. So it definitely uh, means that we know that she's going to take care of her cubs by any means necessary and protect them and um, nurture them. Um, As we always see pictures of lions with their cubs, she's always cleaning them or teaching them or doing something to um, to help them, you know, become either like her or, you know, one day the king of the jungle. Um, We go down, you see a peacock. And that is our little sister. It happens to be her last name as well, but um, she was born to dance and um, phenomenal dancer that just in ways that cannot be taught. It's just natural. And she comes to life um, and cut, makes things colorful and fun. And, um, and she opens up those wings when she starts to dance and it just, makes everybody you know it's like a show watching a show so um, we move over to well let's move down there's a little bird right there Uh oh my phone's trying to Uh oh sorry about that can you see me Mm -hmm. um that is a toucan the first thing that um tangy her her first deal she had um, a pair a parrot sorry not a toucan a parrot and um, <laughs> that is Tangy. Um, that is one of the first things she did was talk. Tangela. Tangela. Well, she's Tangy to me. It's the family reunion as a reunion. And um, right now, this this is Tangy. <laughs> but anyway, Tangela. So let me show uh, you your nickname. Oh, boy. What's it like? But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a parrot, and that is a representation of my sister Tangela. One of the first things and the first skills that she inherited was talking and can just one of those that um, is beautiful, colorful. Um, that's also a majestic. I think all birds are kind of majestic in their own way, but um, there's a, a majesty about her, and there's... Um, they're really friendly. Now I say Tangie's friendly. She is. She's that kind where you may not 
um, know she's thinking about you, but then she'll show up and drop some pebbles, you know, like a bird will come bring you something, um, bring you things, <laughs> little snacks and stuff. You know, say a bird will pick something up with their beak and come put it in your hand or something like that. But um, so, yeah, she's like that. And then um, the kangaroo, it looked like Master Splinter from Ninja Turtles, but <laughs> <laughs> That's a good like if I didn't know it was a kangaroo, I would have said it because I see the pouch yeah. and the feet yeah. along. Yeah. <laughs> so and then you know they lean back on that long tail, so they look like big rat bunny things. But <laughs> um, that is our dad as well. Um, for me, I said kind of like uh, he hops in and hops out. And I think Tangie said that he goes into the shell, but I would say like he kind of hops in and hops out, but a kangaroo doesn't have a pouch, which means that he, there, there's a place for a kid. There is a place for us, but it's just, you know, he's there, but he going to hop in and he going to hop out. And um, so we for that. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So just doing a quick wrap up before we go to the next thing. <laughs> How did you feel? Because this was your first time doing this activity, right? Yes, that was my first time. How how do you feel doing the activity? Um, I know one thing is you gotta be careful which animals you choose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, that's a hard one because um now you know I think about it now that every animal has its positives and also negatives, you know. And the peacock, um, how bright well, peacock. the peacock are, yeah. Yeah, every every animal does. And so you do have to be careful which animals that you choose and be very mindful about um, the characteristics that you're trying to express with the animals as well. I mean, who wants to be a turtle? Turtles are fun. <laughs> just, people like turtles. Some people like turtles. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. what did you think about the animal that right. That was selected for you. Um, for me, a bunny. No, it was right on. Um, I think that there was a little bit more that I saw in myself than obviously you could see that uh, reminded me of the bunny, um, which is what I explained with the story. But um, yeah, it was. I guess I still think I'm soft and cuddly too. You just don't get the cuddle with. That's. <laughs> No. Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm just, and I guess, you know, what's interesting though is because I chose a kangaroo, which is a hop in, a hop out person, and I'm kind of a hopper too. Um, I wouldn't say that I would hop in and hop out, but because um, you know, with a, a rabbit, they're usually, they usually have large families. They are usually around a lot of family, whereas a kangaroo, we notice they are always kind of by themselves. You know, never, I never heard of kangaroos congregating so much and being socialized. And I'm not to say that they don't, but that's not how we've been ex- experienced them. But we've always experienced that rabbits were around a lot of people, well, other rabbits, I put it that way. I, I guess. I don't know enough about them to know what, you know, whether they were around anybody or not. So You didn't watch Bambi? Not, not in, intensely, not enough to pay attention. <laughs> I'm yeah. guilty. I I can't remember even the full story of Bambi. So uh-huh. okay, so that's edit, my. You can, you can edit that out, right? Because no, everybody's seen Bambi. You can edit that out, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not that I didn't see it, but I don't remember. I don't have a recollection. Uh-huh. Okay, what you went gotta on go back and watch story. Bambi. Everybody yeah. miss her mama. <laughs> but that's a lot of stories. Like what did the what was the storyline? You know, like the Jungle Book. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm not okay. I'm not finna down all of the Disney movies. <laughs> you can't. You you know when when you have children, you're seeing all the Disney movies now. <laughs> well, we used to read the little books with the little silver yeah. lining. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we did. Okay, so that was my family's animals. Um, like I said earlier, you can always pause and come back to the video once you get through it. But um, I think it's a great and fun activity. I think. Tiffany, at some point, you should try this with you and your family in the house. Well, you know what, you didn't tell us what you thought about your animal. Oh, the um, toucan slash parrot. The parrot. <laughs> the toucan um, parrot seagull. 
Yeah. Um, I would have not picked a parrot, but I can see why. I like I parrot. I picked a bunny. <laughs> <laughs> but can you see why? I don't I wouldn't see that you would pick the you know the animal. It's not it wasn't for you to pick, but at the same time, I wouldn't have picked a bunny either. You see how when you choose for yourself, how you choose something that's, you know, strong and not, you know, uh, we the way we see ourselves, we wouldn't see that. I wouldn't say bunny rabbit either. But, but I, was, I can see Eric why. Eric has a personality. So that's what mm-hmm. I like about him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They do have a personality and they can be very personal. They can't, you can't actually get uh, build a relationship with the parrot as well. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Personable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. So, okay. 